if you try to just do something very general like dancing or singing or cosplay, let's say, um, there's a lot of competition in that niche. You know, if you get more narrow, let's just say cosplay and dancing, well then you can kind of stand out because you're, oh, you're, you're the cosplayer who's also pretty good at singing or you're the cosplayer who's also very good at dancing or all three. Um, now, you, now you're really standing out. <laughs> If you're struggling to grow on TikTok, I want you to give me your biggest questions about why you think you're not growing, and I will do my best to answer them. Time warp. Should I delete videos that no longer have music attached to it? Uh, you don't have to. Um, there's always a chance you uh, that those rights could come back. It all it all comes down to like the negotiations TikTok makes with like cr uh, music creators and the uh, and the what do you call it? The, um, the agencies, I guess, who manage the, the artists. So if they get the rights back for that song, well, then that song will be good. So then I would probably just leave it up. Just leave it up. It's not that big of a deal to leave it up. Toad. Uh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> hey, I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. What are your biggest questions about growing on TikTok? How are you doing from Kansas? Hello from Louisiana. Fatima asks, why do I eventually stop getting views when a video is doing well? So your video keeps getting pushed to more and more people. Eventually, um, those people become less relevant, meaning they just don't care about the type of video that you created whatever the topic is, and then it'll eventually die. And then, yeah, it's just not holding people's attention when they get less relevant. And in the early stages, your video kind of does well, typically because it's going out to your followers and really relevant people in the For You page first. And then that relevance drops and, and um, in turn, so does their engagement. And then the videos that just explode are just like super engaging for almost anybody. For example, my pressure washing video, they got 16 million. It was just like really satisfying to watch. Angela asks, how come every time I'm making a video, I get them deleted? Uh, every time you make a video, it gets deleted. I don't know. That's, that's really weird. I haven't heard of this, to be honest with you. Is there a niche that's just not like super narrow? Yeah. Dancing is a niche. It's a very, uh, like the more narrow you get, the better your chances of standing out. So if you, if you try to just do something very general, like dancing or singing or cosplay, let's say, um, there's a lot of competition in that niche. You know, if you get more narrow, let's just say cosplay and dancing, well, then you can kind of stand out because, you're, oh, you're, you're the cosplayer who's also pretty good at singing or you're the cosplayer who's also very good at dancing or all three. Um, now you now you're really standing out. Does that make sense? Let's take a parody. Let's take a comedy and, and, and song. You know, they would make like a like a funny song. So it's, it's comedy and it's song, comedy and music, you know, like a parody song creator. There's there's one who's really big on TikTok. Ash Meyer, Ash Myers asks, when a video hits, when a video hit starts to accumulate a large number of likes and views, what makes it stop? Um, just because it's, it's, it's going to a more broad, like every video can't go viral. So as it goes to a more broader, more broad audience, it's going to just lose engagement naturally. What's going on, Jacob? Uh, just checked out the discord. Never been a forum guy, but I'm trying. Yeah, it's not really a forum. It's more of a, I look at it as more of like a chat group. I, I actually hate forums. I used to love forums. I hate them now. Um, discord isn't my favorite, but I, that was kind of like something I'm, you know, I had the discord from when I was a Twitch, a Twitch streamer primarily. And uh, I just decided to move it over to TikTok. Does it hurt you to delete videos? It can. I mean, actually, I don't know for sure, but I think it's more risky than privating. So always, I would say always private first before deleting. Kieran Homer, I want to get to 18K to 19K. Okay. Um, 
Why? You know, just uh, just having those numbers isn't gonna change your life that much. So that's why I, I put this guide in my bio. It just kind of like helps you reframe your goals to like having numbers is cool, but if it's not the right person, then it's not gonna really help you with what you're trying to achieve in life. So my whole thing is like, okay, how can we use TikTok to help us achieve our goals in life? My goal, one of my biggest goals is like, increasing um, and, and, and growing my marketing company. So for me to get a bunch of um, eight to 10 year olds and, and create content specifically for them is not gonna really help me to achieve that goal too much. So uh, if y'all haven't noticed already, a lot of my content's for uh, a little bit older, um, more entrepreneurial types, not just like the general TikTok user. Lindsay Boo says, I gained 4K in a couple weeks of joining. I'm feeling blocked and I don't know what to create or niche to do. Well, it all starts with what you're trying to achieve in your life. What are your big goals? Um, based on that, you can put together your target audience. Based on your target audience, you can put together content that really appeals to them. Um, and then you'll get some attention to what it is that you're trying to do, which will come with a bunch of opportunities from people who reach out. Um, and people that you connect with. Frank asks, should you approach a shot on goal or worry about bad content hurting your brand? Now, bad content can mean two things. It can mean like bad, meaning like against the community guidelines, or it can mean just low quality. Um, yeah, I think low quality content if you do too much of it now once in a while it's probably not that big of a deal but if you do too much you can just be like oh this is the guy who creates bad content like low quality content um and that could be okay like if you saw what gary vaynerchuk is doing like his quality is not exactly great for the stuff he's been doing with like tea with gary v um the vi the video quality is not that great the audio is decent enough but um you know it's just like whatever like he he's dropping a lot of knowledge and value even with bad low production quality, and it's it's perfectly fine. Um, and then stuff that's against community guidelines um, could could be just you could get your account banned or suspended, and it's just uh, you know you're gonna lose content when it's when it's stricken down. I do not want to work. Says I like to dance and to make funny videos. Does that mean I'll never grow because you can't combine them? Uh, I just gave an example of how to combine funny and dance, literally. <laughs> um, you can't do funny dances? Is that? Uh, you can't like do a TikTok dance in like a funny costume or something? There's gotta be a way to combine funny and like make silly faces while doing the TikTok dances. Um, and then there's that one girl who makes those silly faces while she, she's not really dancing, but she's lip syncing like ad libs to a rap song and you know she's like doing all those facial expressions that are kind of funny but she's also kind of dancing at the same time there's ways to combine stuff you got to just think outside the box of what's currently being done and uh that could make you a star i think when am i picking the three accounts i was thinking about giving it a week i even if you saw my live stream from yesterday i even told alexa to like remind me in a week to pick the three people because I wanted to give more people a chance to um, get their submission in. Slyfoot. My views on a video started 24 hours later. 27 views yesterday, and then the views began flowing today. Thanks for sharing. I mean, that's not that uncommon. Um, I, don't, I don't have the context of your channel to see if that's good or bad. For my channel, 27 views in a day would be pretty bad. But, you know, when you've got something potentially risky in your content uh, they probably want to submit it for a manual review which can take time my worry when that happens is are you still going to get that good first initial push when you have to wait like a day or more to get that approval so that's why i recommend people just just to, just just private it and re-upload with a different caption slash description if i miss your question go ahead and uh and resubmit it I'm just gonna do my best here. Jacob, is there a way to tell specifically why your video was removed? 
Um, usually they send you a message that shows up in your TikTok notifications, don't they? And then you can uh, you can kind of guide it from there. They'll tell you why. They'll tell you the community guideline that it, that that you broke, and then you can appeal it. At least it seems the last. It seems like sometimes you can appeal it, sometimes you can't. So if there's an appeal, take advantage of it. Pam asks, how important are hashtags? Do I stick to relevant? Yeah, I'd say definitely stick to relevant um, just because it gives you more long-term growth. TikTok is going to suggest you um, to people who are interested in that type of content, who like content with similar hashtags. It's going to have a higher chance of good engagement. And then if you use irrelevant hashtags, you're kind of hoping on... Thank you, Nathan. You're kind of hoping on hoping that people who are just like surfing through that hashtag are gonna happen upon it and be like blown away even though it has nothing to do with the, the rest of the stuff. Um, which, you know, it, 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 is, it is our growth strategy but I'd rather people use relevant hashtags. KJ asks, do all TikTok accounts start slowly over time or is it possible to have a viral video off the bat? Yeah, you can have a viral video off the bat. Uh, because if you look at, at Jeff Corrett Fitness, my little fitness channel, I didn't do too much with it, but my first video got, um, I think, 2 million views on that channel. Now, it was a proven formula. It was, it was, a, it was a formula that had worked on this channel. Um, so I had, a, I had an idea it would work. But yeah, if it's, if it's a good video, it can, it can blow up. Your first video can blow up, I promise. Official Geronda. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. My analytics show more activity afternoon, but I've seemed to get more engagement early morning. Okay, so what a lot of people don't factor in when they're trying to see when is the best time to post is competition. Like, just because more of your followers are active at a certain time doesn't necessarily mean that's the best time to post. We don't. What we don't have is the data on when is that good ratio of like... Um, a lot of people, a decent amount of people being active without that many people posting. And, um, you know, that's something I looked at when I was a Twitch streamer. They don't have that here on TikTok. So you just have to kind of use your best judgment. Um, and really probably, you know, I, I've had videos blow up that are posted at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., um, which is probably my one of my least uh, best times to post if I were to look at, you know, when my audience was like active. But, you know, they've, they've still done well. Um, there's no way to know what your true best time to post is. So I would just kind of go by gut feel. Um, and don't ever let like timing prevent you from publishing something that you know is good. Dasa asks, what editors can we use to edit TikToks? Uh, I try to use the TikTok editor whenever possible because I believe it in, injects metadata into your posts, which can help gain trust with TikTok. Like if they know that the entire thing was created within TikTok, um, there's less of a chance that it needs, uh, a, a, you know, an additional review because they what they don't want is people posting other people's content um, that's potentially copyrighted. Then they have to deal with that. It's more headaches on their end. So like. You know, there's, I think there's more initial trust when you build the whole thing in TikTok. So try to use TikTok whenever possible. It's got a lot of features. If you're doing something that doesn't fit within TikTok's features, um, you know, I just use, I use Video Shop. It's an iOS app. And there's a bunch of other ones too that people like. Uh, Benjamin, does the FYP hashtag really work? Because it's like a billion people that post it. Um, so that's an example of correlation does not equal causation. So a lot of people think that hashtag FYP is something that can help your video get more views um, because they scroll through the For You page and they see a bunch of people who have it. Um, what they're forgetting is all the hundreds of or millions of hundreds of thousands or millions of posts that have hashtag FYP and have like zero to 10 views. So they're seeing all these people with hashtag FYP because people feel like they have to have it. But in actuality, in actuality, it has nothing to do with the success of a post. I mean, I've had a ton of really awesome performing posts with, without that, or any kind of similar hashtag. Hashtag FYP, hashtag For You page, 
hashtag for you, hashtag XYC, BCA, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, all that, all that stuff. And it's actually, and then the downside, because if there were, if, if this downside did not exist, it would be okay. But the downside is you lose space in your limited description slash caption to put relevant hashtags. And if you were to put relevant hashtags, people, you know, the for you page algorithm could actually show it to the right people. KJ asks, how do we improve our hashtag and caption game? Uh, just kind of describe what the video is about and use relevant hashtags. You know, if you're doing a funny dance, hashtag funny dance, hashtag dance funny, hashtag comedy dance, um, hashtag dance comedy, hashtag dancing with a smile or dancing with a silly, whatever it is. Just, just describe, 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 describe. And then just think about like helping the algorithm decide who to show it to. Think about it like that. Madison asks, how can I make my content more irreplaceable? The word irreplaceable is a weird one for me. Irreplaceable. Irre I think you mean like, how can you make your content stand out more? And the way to do that is um, take what people are currently doing that's working and kind of add your own spin. Um, if you have any unique talent, show that off. Uh, be creative. Um, but of course, if you're too creative, it can be kind of risky. Like, oh, um, if people see something on TikTok and then it's just, you know, they have no idea what they're looking at, they're just going to swipe. I don't know, there's some sort of comfort with people recognizing things in TikTok, I feel like. Um, so just take exactly what's working for other people, add your unique spin, a little creativity, show off whatever it is that you're good at. Um, yeah. If Is five posts per day too much? Ask Sabrina. Um, no, I don't think so. As long as it's quality. Make sure it's good, good ideas, good execution, and you should be just fine with five, if not more. A guy was telling me, and he's up to 300,000 followers, um that his account, something, I don't know, something seemed to unlock in his account. And this is not probably something with the algorithm, but I think it's more of a mental unlock than anything else. But he posted 20 in one day and all of a sudden his following just like exploded. Um, but I think it's just the fact that like, it doesn't, there's no limit to how many, there's no max to how many things you can post. Like it's just like create good content and let the algorithm do the rest. Kai asked, what are, what are your views on an engagement group that has a specific niche? People that will like your stuff. Um, yeah, I think any kind of like really small engagement group full of people who actually do are like super interested in each other's work can be just fine. The problem I have is, is people who are, um, you know, it, it, like the bigger, the bigger the group, I guess the harder it is to get this done. Um, yeah, because cause the people aren't going to necessarily like each other's stuff. So if it's really niche and the people are truly interested in each other's stuff and they're going to like it anyway, um, I would say that that's probably fine and just kind of boost that up a little bit. So I would say once you get past like maybe 20, it starts to get too big. Maybe even, I mean, honestly, probably like 5 to 10. Once you get past that, it starts to probably get uh, a little bit too too big. Shelly asks, how do you know if your account is dying? I would say if you're losing followers, your follower count is going down instead of going up, that's probably not a good sign. But, and it's a sign that your account is possibly dying. By the way, uh, I don't know if y'all saw, but I put a uh, I put yesterday's live Q&A on my, on my YouTube channel. It's just Jeff Corrett on YouTube. So um, I'm, I'm recording this in a different way. It's kind of like a test. My, uh, my daughter actually showed me a way that I could record it on my phone and pick up my microphone. So we, that, this, is, this is kind of a test to see how that works. How do I get verified, asked Jonas. Uh, first, you gotta be famous. Are you famous? I post, adorable kiddo, I post TikToks every day and I get max 15 views. Okay, uh, well it's more than just posting every day. 
Um, you need to be like really stepping up your content. You need to be giving people what they're not getting right now. You need to like, you need to find your, uh, your target audience, which depends on whatever your goal is in life. Like, what are you trying to do with your life? Are you trying to become like a chef? Um, maybe you could just like document your process on, on all the different learnings, different types of foods that you're trying. I had success just trying my air fryer out. You know, hey, what happens if I put frozen chicken breast in an air fryer? I got 4.2 million views. Just experimenting. It wasn't like education. It was like, hey, let's see what happens. I'm going to show y'all because I don't even know. <laughs> and then that did really well. So uh, just kind of sharing people your life a little bit, but like try to get your target audience. It'll be easier. The, the more defined your target audience, the easier it'll be to grow. St. JMC, how do I get out of a shadow ban? I used to go viral daily, but now I struggle to get 100K views. Help. Well, a lot of people in here would love to have that problem, honestly. I mean, that's uh, that's a ton of views. Um, I mean, 100K, dude. Like, what do you expect? Um, first of all, I would say if you're getting that many views and I don't recognize your name, you're probably posting other people's content. Um, so try to start creating your own content. Try to Try to break out of that a little bit. Um, I would say that, um, another thing is when people say they're shadow banned, they're probably not. They're probably just getting a per content type of, type of suppression. Also TikTok's getting a lot more crowded. There's a lot more people like, it's really easy to just take somebody's clip and post it to your channel. I'm not saying you do that, but if you do, I mean, then how are you going to stand out? Because all you're doing is taking a clip and putting it to your channel. Anybody can do that. I even I created Jeff Corrett Gaming just to experiment with that. And like my fifth post got 600,000 views. Because all I was doing was taking other people's clip and posting it to my channel in a slightly different way. Um, but it's just one of those things. Like how are you going to stand out like that? So I would say be more creative with your content. It's The competition on TikTok is getting more fierce. So everybody here needs to step their game up. Because in a year from now, it's going to be a lot harder to get followers than it is right now. Uh, this opportunity is still good. It's getting harder, but it's still there. So take advantage. Brianna asked, does posting many TikToks at the same time hinder their performance? Um, I'm, I'm not really sure. I think that I've experimented with posting back to back. And like one of them takes off and the rest do, do average. And then I've, had, I've experimented with um, putting some time between them. To, to let more um, of my followers see him. So uh, I, I don't think it matters that much, but um, if you want to be a little bit on the safer side, put like an hour between them and you'll probably be fine. Virgo says, if you figured out your niche, shouldn't it, shouldn't you post only to that content? Will it hurt to mix it up? I think you can experiment with mixing it up. I think when you do too much mixing up, from your niche or your target audience or what it is that you typically do, I think it can turn some people off and get them to unfollow you. Um, like for example, let's say Charlie, she's known for dancing, right? Let's just say, and, and we see her every once in a while, she does something else. Like the other day she, she posted that she was like stuck in her stairway banister or something like that. Um, if she did too much random stuff and like barely any dancing, you know, you might see a lot of people unfollow her just because they followed her because they like the way she dances and they love the dance content. So, Bo asks, mix Spanish and English videos on the same account. Bad. Hmm, good question. Um, yeah, I think I think there could be an issue with your followers when when you first post. They might see your content, like your English speaking followers might see your Spanish content. I don't know how good I'm, I'm not honestly that familiar with the bilingual aspect of TikTok. So I don't really know um, if they're going to show your English speaking like a lot of English speaking U.S. people like don't even speak Spanish. Um, but but here's the thing. If a lot of people are bilingual in your own country. And you post it's probably going to go to your country first. So that would probably be fine because they'll know what you're saying in both in both of those examples. Because the way that TikTok works, you TikTok works, you kind of got to um, do really well in your own country before you expand. And that's on a per video basis. So I'm not talking about your whole account. I'm talking about one piece of content has to kind of dominate your own country before it gets shown to other countries. 
Take that with a grain of salt, but it's more or less true. Scuba Diver Joe asks, how do I stop trolls pretending to be my friends and family? TikTok does nothing when it's reported. Uh, that's a problem I haven't had yet. Um, they're pretending to be your family what in comments or... Oh, 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 oh. Like, they make a TikTok and say, hey, I'm, I'm Jeff Corrett's brother or something. You know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's that's something any celebrity would have to deal with, right? Like, hey, I'm Leonardo DiCaprio's cousin. I, and I've seen a bunch of people do that with, like, NBA stars. But, I mean, I guess it's just kind of a desperate play for attention. Um, it's kind of sad if people are lying about that. But, um, I don't know. I also feel, you know, hey, if you see somebody who's making a claim that they're related to a famous person, uh, take that with a big grain of salt. Let's say that. And maybe we can put... Maybe we can all put a stop to that together by educating people like that. That's a trick. And uh, yeah, I feel like I spend a lot of time telling people that they're getting tricked. Blue blooded hunk, how to gain more views. Please suggest some tips. Uh, if you want more views in your video, you got to get people to watch to the end. It's all, it's probably the most important thing. Rewatches are better, but if, if your um, audience isn't on average watching basically a hundred percent or more, it's probably not going to do that well. And the way to figure that out, you need to go to uh, settings, manage my account, enable pro mode. So once you have pro mode enabled, you can go to share, you can go to your video that you're thinking about. Um, it, it takes 24 hours to, to show this. And then you hit share and analytics, and then you'll be able to see how long people are watching for. And if they're not watching for like close to 100%, that's it. That's why I tell people to create shorter videos because your chances of getting them to watch to the end are a lot higher. Uh, somebody asked a question about comedy. I wonder. I can't find it though. Oh, here it is. Uh, oh, no, that's just somebody saying something. Uh, tips for coming up with good content. Asked Amashina. Amashina? Amashin Asian. <laughs> tips for coming up with good content. Okay. Easiest thing. Go into your account and see which of your videos got the most views. Do more of that. And then, because you know that works for you. Going on Charlie's account and like, maybe maybe she, she's actually a much better dancer than people give her credit for. So, um, so like it's, it's kind of hard to just like blow up just being a dancer. Like you got to bring something else to the table because Charlie's already dominated and Addison and all those people are just kind of dominating the dance niche and all the other dancers that are already known. Um, it's just going to be really hard for you to stand out as kind of like a slightly above average dancer when there's already a, a ton of people doing that. So, uh, do something else along with dancing, make some silly faces. I don't know, sing lip sync while dancing, which they're kind of doing too. Now they're, they're also lip syncing and dancing in most cases. Um, what else can you do it while I don't know, juggling or wearing a costume? TikTok's getting mature and it's getting crowded. We, we need to step our games up, all of us, including myself. Ebier VFX, why are my, none of my videos getting on the FYP, even with your tips? Uh, my question to you, Ebier, would be, what is your average view duration? That's my number one tip. Watch your average view duration. If if they're not if they're not getting to the end of the video on average, then you're they're not going to go to the FYP or they're not going to stay there very long. So if you're gonna if you're gonna tell me that you followed my tips and they didn't take you to the FYP, I gotta ask about that average view duration. Because if it's eighty percent, it needs to be ninety percent or a hundred. Eighty percent sounds like a lot, but it really depends on the length of the video. Cryptic asks, here's an interesting question. I haven't seen this yet. I don't have anyone to record me do the things I want to do. All right, so there's this thing called the tripod uh, or you just put your phone up. Yeah, you just put your phone up, dude. Like, like prop your phone up. Hold on. Put your phone on a table like that. Okay, and then in TikTok, there's some features where you can like just set the timer, set the timer, um, and then yeah, set the timer, 
it, it'll start recording and you can set it where it stops. So, okay, you can record a five second, you can set it to, okay, after you hit the thing, it'll count three or 10 seconds, whatever you pick, and then you can set it to stop at whatever point. Um, so you don't even need a tripod. A tripod's a, a luxury. Just prop your phone up on something, a table, chair, whatever. Come on, man. All right. Uh, hi, call me Miming. Miming. Any tips on going live on TikTok? Just Q and A. It depends on your niche. It depends on your target audience. Why are they following you? Um, I have an education channel. Q and A makes perfect sense. If you have a music channel, people aren't going to be like wanting to learn about music. They're probably going to want to be asking, wanting to hear you perform live. Maybe. Um, or just experiment, see what they, see what people in the comments say. I know anytime I go live, I'm gonna get a lot of questions, but there's other people who are kind of in the grow your TikTok who get nothing but shout out and follow for follow requests, which I don't do any of that stuff really. Um, Kiko asks, should I delete the videos that were banned by TikTok or just leave them there? Well, if they're banned by TikTok, they're going to be deleted naturally. So you can just leave them there. EM underscore super. I play video games like Call of Duty, Fortnite, and XTC, but I only get 100 views maybe. Okay. So I would uh, try to, if you're not already, try to incorporate your face in your clips because, you know, just, just a regular old clip is very, uh, it's not that great unless it's like, and, and you're competing against people like the best in the world when it when it's just a clip when your face is there you're like you're like a person playing a game when it's just a clip it's kind of boring i think uh and like even if even if the clip is like super awesome it's like yeah still like this is like a faceless person so i would say incorporate your face in your clip somehow and it's not going to be easy uh but figure it out if you're serious about this and i think it'll help you grow how much should you post per day i'd say at least four quality pieces and uh, and duets are working really well right now, y'all. Like if you're not taking advantage of duets, it's not that much work. All you're doing is like sitting there. You try to add. Don't just sit there and look at, but add something. I like to if if I'm sitting there just looking at their at their post in my duet, I will add a bunch of text bubbles to add something to it. But I always add something to it. And I had success just kind of giving a sly look on one of Addison's um, posts. So I just did kind of a sly look double glance at, uh, I was in my bathroom mirror and just that just kind of like what is this I think it was that oh yeah she was just making like goofy faces on the camera like just kind of just kind of like this I did that twice and that that got like tens of thousands of views because I was like, <laughs> kind of like almost like the office if you've seen the office it's kind of like those little those little sly glances you know what I'm saying so um it, but it but it wasn't much we're talking about you know 60 seconds of work for a for a, a good piece of content. So and duets are really working well right now. Some people duet my stuff and they get more views than the original. <laughs> like uh my TikTok whack a mole video. Oh by the way, I have this uh TikTok growth guide. If you get a chance, it's in my bio. I, you you type in your email address and it gets sent to you via email. So it's got all my best tips. If you haven't read that, uh that would definitely be something you want to check out. I, I made it really short. It's only one page and you can read it in about five minutes. Thank you for the, uh, for the gifts y'all. Did you know the earth is actually flat? NASA lied. Oh boy. I'm going to go ahead and say the earth is round. Um, Yorkshire fine. Got 78 K for one of my vids, but so mix and match. Okay. Theo is sticking to your niche important. I would say, yeah, it's important for growth. And you can, uh, you can experiment a little bit, um, but if there's something you're really passionate about and you think it is deserving of another channel and it's something that your current followers see too much of, they're going to unfollow you. Like for me, I know if, people, if I talk too much about the Saints and Pelicans, my favorite two sports teams on this channel, let's be honest, y'all would probably unfollow me. It's like, oh, this, all, this, all this guy seems to do lately is talk about the Saints. You'll probably unfollow me. Bake Spud, sorry, but is it true that TikTok prefers original audio over the sound clips? Uh, 
Uh, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. I, you can certainly have success with either one. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't make a decision based on either one. Like I've had, yeah, I've had awesome results both ways. So I don't, I don't think they really care. Um, I will say if you have an original audio that's actually original, you're not using copyrighted material, you have zero chance of it getting taken down. Where if you use some kind of copyrighted song or a clip, even if it's trending, it does have a chance of getting taken down. So I would say using original audio is less risky. But at the same time, when people hear something, there, there's a certain thing, like a mental thing in TikTok, where if people hear or see something familiar, like it makes them comfortable. There's there's something to that. And that, that's why I think a lot of like repeated jokes do so well on TikTok. So, um, you know, if, if you're struggling to have success with your original audio, definitely try some trending songs. Top, just pick a top three trending song, even if it has nothing to do with um, what people are normally doing to it. Ooh, here's a good question by E.S. Denig. How do you manage anxiety from growing your profile? Uh, you shouldn't be having too much anxiety, man. Like this is not, uh, you just want to, um, just, just have your daily goal of like four pieces of content, whatever it is, and just do it. And, uh, just, just have confidence that the growth will come slowly, but surely a lot of people on TikTok are very impatient. I've noticed this. Luckily I have the, I have the perspective of trying to grow a Twitch, which is way harder, way way harder than TikTok. I mean, night and day. I mean, I had to spend hours and hours and hours every single day um, streaming and like strategizing and like there was no discoverability. And uh, it took me like, to, to get 3,500 followers on Twitch, it took me like two years where I got that on TikTok in like a month or two, something like that. And then when my, when my account hit 20K, I doubled it in like two weeks um, just because things were basically I hit a viral video. I mean, or like a 16 million video, which helped a lot. And, and then some other stuff that I did. But um, my point is a lot of people on TikTok are extremely impatient just because they don't have the same perspective that I do. I know this stuff takes time. And that's what I recommend for you. Like if you're feeling anxiety, you should never feel anxiety um, on TikTok. I, 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 I don't feel it. Um, I would say stop comparing yourself to others. Compare yourself to yourself. Like, all right, last week I got this many followers. This week I want to get that many followers plus 10%, plus 20%. That could be your goal. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of y'all might have friends and stuff. They might be growing faster than you and that can make you feel bad. Um, but I would say don't compare yourself to them. Compare yourself to yourself. And before you know it, you're going to have a bunch of people who are super jealous of like your success. Um, and they're going to be asking you. They're going to be wanting to connect with you. They're going to be wanting to ask you for help. Um, and, and that's going to make you feel really good, but don't give yourself anxiety or stress out too much about your TikTok growth. Um, if you follow my guidance, I think, you know, people tell me every single day that it works. So, I mean, I think it's going to work for you. Um, just follow my guidance and, and, and hold yourself accountable. Like if you say you're going to post four times a day, do it. Don't let yourself start watching Netflix and don't, don't let yourself start playing video games until you've done what you set out to do for that day. Um, hold yourself more accountable, find some, find some other people who like, you can hold each other accountable, um, to do what you said you were going to do and you gotta, you gotta do it. And I'll tell you this, most of the people who are struggling on TikTok, I look at their account, they barely have any content. So you gotta have, I would say you should, you should have at least a hundred pieces of content before you complain at all about growth. Most people who are saying that they're not growing, you have like 20 30 max. Like, yeah, I posted that like in the last five days. So you gotta have a lot of content. And there's a, there's a big correlation on with YouTubers. Um, I know it's a different platform, but it's kind of the same thing where like the more videos a YouTuber has, there was a direct correlation with how many followers they had because every single post you put gives you a chance to go viral and get you seen. So naturally, the more posts you make, the more chance you have of success. So y'all want to guess? Guess in the comments how many videos y'all think I have. Go ahead and guess. I'm curious what y'all think. Let me see. 
Come on, I want to see how many how many pieces of con TikTok content on this channel alone. How many pieces do y'all think I have? Four hundred plus. Koo Johnny, seven hundred. Somebody says two hundred, two thousand, three hundred. All right, I have about seven hundred, maybe seven hundred and fifty at this point. A lot of y'all were right on the money. I, I I did talk about this this yesterday, so, <laughs> but yeah. 700. That means I'm, you know, I've been posting like four to seven per day for like, you know, four or five months now. So if you've only got 25 pieces of content and you're complaining about growing, I don't want to say you're out of line, but like you need to step it up. You're, you're way below the curve. Um, and nobody, very rarely do people just explode out of nowhere on TikTok. Like that happens because they have a really good strategy. They make really awesome content. Do I earn any money from TikTok? Actually, I am doing um, consulting. I have an elite, I have elite consulting, which is very intense. It's like private, elite private consulting. I have regular private consulting and I've got group consulting. Um, so I make money from all three of those. If anybody's interested in that, by the way, feel free to reach out and I'll give you more details. I also have some other monetization channels, you know, affiliate marketing like Amazon Associates program. I've got the that time box platform, which you can see from some of my videos. Um, all right, y'all. I need to end it here because I got a lot of stuff to do. I got a whole I got a whole business to run. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I'm gonna tell y'all one more time. Go in my bio and grab that TikTok growth guide if you haven't already. Um, there's all my best tips are right there. It's gonna help you get more followers and views faster. So very important that you get that. Um, and then. I think it'll cut down a lot of the questions. All the basic questions I think are answered there. All right, y'all. Have an amazing day. Go out and crush it. Get you some new views and followers. Hey, four pieces of content today from each one of y'all. I want you to get your four pieces of content out and then come in one of my posts and let me know that you did it. Let me see how many people we can get from this live stream and the people who watch this on YouTube to go and do that. All right, y'all. Have a great day. See you soon.